A reading from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Wednesday, the Christian community around the world began its Lenten journey with the observance of Ash Wednesday. Lent begins with the invitation on that day to remember our frailty and the uncertainty of human life. This holy season begins by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We mark the occasion and our very selves with ashes while hearing the words, remember you are dust and to the dust you shall return. It is an invitation, albeit a somber invitation, to remember that though we may be weak in body, mind, or spirit, we are loved by God who has created us, who has redeemed us, and who sustains us. As Christians, we are all marked with water at our baptisms. And so for the children who are still in the sanctuary at this moment, I want to invite them to look inside their worship bags, those blue bags, and to find this little bag of water and to take it out so that you can touch and feel the water, so that you can see the water that we are marked with at our baptisms, like Charlie and Finley were this morning. In our baptisms, we too were marked with water and identified as the loved children of God. In the ancient church, Lent was the traditional time for converts to be instructed for baptism and for baptized believers to pause, acknowledge the presence of sin in their life, and to reorient themselves back to God's ways. Some baptismal liturgies, dating all the way back to the second century, include a series of renunciations and commitments in the form of questions. It asks, do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of evil that rebel against God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ? Do you intend to be Christ's faithful disciple trusting his promises, obeying his word, honoring the church, and showing his love as long as you shall live. This traditional series of questions, which we ourselves use a form of, especially when it is an adult baptism, captures our lectionary gospel text from Mark. It encapsulates, really, I think, the Lenten journey. We start with Jesus' baptism, moved to his renunciation of evil by not succumbing to temptation in the wilderness, and then to his call to repent and believe. The Lenten journey leads us to Holy Week and Easter, where we celebrate redemption through the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time for us to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the mystery of the passion the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We are invited in the name of Christ to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and penitence, through prayer and fasting, works of love and service, and meditating on the word of God. 
Now, this is going to look differently for each of us, and we may need to do a little bit of exploration before we discover what it is that we need to do in order to turn away from sin and turn towards God. If you don't know where to begin, or perhaps if you've been doing the same Lenten practice for years and you need some fresh ideas, I want to commend two opportunities that I've already lifted up for you this morning. One is I invite you and John Ryder invites you to join him on Wednesday evenings at 6.15 for one hour to explore a whole variety of spiritual practices. It will be an introduction to multiple practices that you can incorporate into not only your Lenten journey, but indeed into your life of discipleship more broadly. And the second is this year's devotional guide. Within these pages, you will find practices and exercises that will connect you to God and to God's creation. There is something for everyone, and I commend it to you. I think sometimes we set ourselves up for failure in Lent, thinking that we must do something really big in order for it to be an impactful and a meaningful Lent. Or we may become so overwhelmed at the beginning and thinking about what it is that we are going to do in Lent that we end up not doing anything at all. Don't fall prey to either of these traps this year. Start small and attainable. Maybe you commit to arriving to church five minutes early. Or perhaps you commit to staying in church five minutes after. And you find space in the sanctuary or in the chapel or even out in the memorial garden when it's not a rainy, wet day. And just sit there. Maybe you pray, maybe you sit in silence. Maybe you need something a little bit more active. If so, what would it look like if you were to commit every time during the season of Lent that you come to Palmasia Presbyterian Church, you walk and pray the perimeter of our facility? What if you started in the parking lot and walked up the sidewalk along Cardenas, and as you do so, you pray for the neighborhood? And then as you turn along San Jose, and pass through the front of the playground for our children and the front of the sanctuary, you pray for this church and for the mission and the ministries here in this place. And then as you come alongside of Himes, you pray for the school that is across the street and all schools. Indeed, you pray for God's world and the light of Christ in the world. And then as you return to the parking lot, you pray for the broader church, the church of Jesus Christ around the world. If you're a reader, commit to reading something every day. Maybe you commit to reading one psalm every day. Or read the newspaper and lift up a prayer as you do. Or read poetry a friend of mine posts every year at the start of Lent the same poem by Mary Oliver, Wild Geese. I've come to look forward to seeing this poem posted every year. It really begins my Lenten journey. I find myself looking forward to it, and it serves as a good and a gentle reminder to me. I want to share it with you. The poem reads, You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about your despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. 
Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. Friends, Lent is an invitation to reconnect with God and God's creation and of discovering our own place in the family of God. With a sure and certain hope of the knowledge that God creates us, redeems us, and sustains us, let us begin this Lenten journey as our ancestors in faith began their Christian journey. I'm going to share again those ancient baptismal questions. And this time, I invite you, if you desire, to respond, out loud or within the silence of your heart, as you begin this Lenten journey. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of evil that rebel against God? Do you? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you? Do you turn to Jesus Christ? Do you? Do you intend to be Christ's faithful disciple, trusting his promises, obeying his word, honoring his church, and showing his love as long as you live? Do you? I invite you now to stand in body, mind, or spirit, and with the church around the world, past, present, and future, let us declare our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.